Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to review neck pain. This is an excerpt from a broader course covering all of the symptoms that we encounter with cervical spondylosis. If you're interested in seeing the full course, we've left a link in the description. So now we have discussed two of the three patterns of symptoms that we see with cervical spondylosis. We discussed cervical myelopathy and the signs and symptoms associated with that. We've discussed cervical radiculopathy. Both of those symptom constellations are related to nerves, either the spinal nerves, the spinal cord. The last category of symptoms to talk about is neck pain. Now, neck pain can have a various different causes. There's a lot of different things that can cause it, some of which relate to the cervical spine, like you can see here, but many of which have nothing to do with the cervical spine. They can come from muscles, they can come, headaches can cause it, other visceral things, chest pain, heart problems, all kinds of things, esophagus, swallowing dysfunction, ENT problems. There's a variety of things that can be associated with neck pain. So traditionally, if a patient comes in with neck pain alone, it's something we do not recommend surgery for, but often we'll get a workup. I mean, we'll get imaging and MRI, CAT scan, make sure there's not something very concerning that could be contributing to it. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about what neck pain is and how it can relate to the cervical spine. So the, here's again this image that we showed before, a frozen section, kind of a sagittal slice that's taken through the cervical spine. And you can see the discs at the top look pretty good. Here you can see there's some disc degeneration that's more pronounced. It just doesn't have the sponginess and the whiteness, so to speak. Here, you can see here it's a little drier and a little bit um, less spongy. That, this is the front part of the spine. Here you can see the frame in here. There's not much in the way of foraminal stenosis, but you can see the joints. This joint looks beautiful, a little bit irregular here. It gets a little more irregular as you go down. The person has a little bit of bone spurring here, but certainly you can have a fair amount of arthritis in the neck or spondylitic changes in the cervical spine that can cause neck pain. Of course, that is a potential mechanism for it, sometimes from the joints, and we call that uh, facet-mediated pain, uh, sometimes from the disc itself or discogenic pain. Remember again that these structures, and here you can see a little bit of it, are kind of wrapped in muscle though, and the muscle and fascia, all of those things can cause it. You can have, everybody's had like a muscular sprain or strain injury at some point, kind of pull your neck, neck, sleep wrong, something like that. Those are muscular injuries that can cause neck pain as well. So there are a lot of paraspinal structures or structures that are around the spine that can cause neck pain as well. And all of that can present as just run of the mill kind of neck pain. There are other forms of neck pain that can come from the cervical spine. There's radicular neck pain, which we had discussed briefly when we talked about upper cervical radiculopathy. So C2, C3, C4, C4 will often cause pain here. C2 and 3 can cause kind of pain here and kind of pain up higher than that. So sometimes people can have nerve root related neck pain. It's really a diagnosis of exclusion, which means you have to make sure there's nothing else. And you have to really verify that it's truly coming from that before recommending anything more aggressive in terms of treatment for it. Um, the lower cervical nerves can sometimes cause neck pain, but it's somewhat unreliable. So I would say, in aggregate, when you think about neck pain, it's something that we tell people the treatment options for that are generally non-surgical. Physical therapy, chiropractor, acupuncture, yoga, Pilates, there's a variety of things that you can try. We generally do not recommend surgical intervention for neck pain, and neck pain tends to be self-limited, tends to get better with time as well. And that's part of the reason that we try not to do anything irreversible for it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.